There we go. Hi, hello everybody. How are you doing? I um, hope you had a lovely, lovely weekend. Um, it's been it's been quite nice here. Sarah Jane's still off on holiday. She's away in Cornwall and uh, she's been walking lots of atmospheric beaches with the doggies and sending me lots of pictures, but she seems to be having a lush time. Um, I've got a lovely, lovely guest here today. Um, this is Gail. She's from Endless Threads and she's going to join us today and she's going to show you the cutest things you've ever seen in your life. I'm completely in love with these gnomes. They're amazing. They really are. Um, oh, thank you, Sarah. Yes, they're right. Um, so come along and say hello. If you're there, let me know that you can hear us and, you know, our usual tech and all that nonsense. Make sure you can hear us and everything. I'm going to be keeping an eye on the comments while Gail sort of shows you some of her stuff. There we go. You're all coming online. Lovely, lovely. Hi, Kate. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Jean. Hi, Carol. First time. Oh, lovely. Welcome, welcome. Um, hi, Anne. Hi, Wendy. Oh, I hope you're, well, you are. You're all going to absolutely love this. Hi, Claire, as well. Lovely. Every, lots and lots of people coming on. Um, hi, Debbie. Uh, Favourite fabric spy and, the be and your bestie Gail together. Oh, oh. look. <laughs> oh, that's just been there. Thank oh, you. Oh, cool. Um, so, sound of picture's good, Jean. Brilliant. Everything's working for a change. You know how dodgy it is sometimes. Uh, hi, Taryn, as well. Lovely, lovely. Um, so, Gail is... Um, you own Endless Threads, don't you? I do. That's, that's do. my company. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, she's going to be doing a little giveaway. So if you hang on till the end, we're going to go through that as well. Um, we, I am, you might have seen her on Hachanda Stroke, the craft store, Stroke, Crate and Craft, whatever it is now. <laughs> she's been, you've been going on there lots, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're on there um, every month and been every on there for, I can't remember now whether it's four or five years. Wow. So, uh, yeah, 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 it seems like a lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, um, she, she does some amazing stuff. Lots of 3D things as well, something that we certainly don't do because, you as you know, we're all mainly quilting and patchworky stuff. But the most amazing 3D stuff, your sheep that I saw last time that I was up there. Oh, oh my yeah. God, he's I, the cutest. I, I, did bring, I did bring a sheep with me, but, uh, but sadly he's only my demo version. So, uh, so Sue's got the others. They're on holiday at the moment in Sussex. Oh, the sheep. <laughs> Um, so who else is coming online just before we get going? Uh, Carol, you love Gail's products. She's so talented. She Ooh. is indeed, isn't she? You wait till you see these gnomes. They're just the best. <laughs> who else is there? Um, like, oh, I forget that this laptop isn't touchscreen. <laughs> um, your material arrived this morning. Excellent. Thank you, Carol. Thank you for ordering. Uh, hi, Claire. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Carolyn. Lovely, lovely. Lots and lots of you coming online. Brilliant. So um, I'm going to ask um, Gail just to tell us a little bit about her company, Endless Threads, and what th sort of things she does, um, and then show you some of her lovely Easter products, because she's got some really, really lovely projects to show you. So Thank you. Tell, tell us all about Endless Threads. What have you been, oh, what have you been doing? Well, well, what can I tell you? Um, I've had the company for, oh, I don't know, a number of years, can't remember really. <laughs> um, started off patchwork and quilting, really, so making sort of things like this and um, teaching patchwork and quilting. And then um, I was exhibiting um, some of my quilts in a quilt show, oh, and then yeah. I met Sue from Daisy Chain. Yeah. And she said to me, could you write a pattern for those quilts? <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure if I, I've never written a pattern. So I give it a go. Yeah. And then that was the start of it, really. Yeah. So, um, so my business has sort of evolved. So I started with, I'm sort of feeding the patchwork market, yeah. really. So lots of quilted things, lots of wall hangings and that. And then when I got the wonderful opportunity of being on TV, which mm. trust me is super scary um, <laughs> I, um, I, I realised that people had an appetite to make 3D things and, um, and I quite like making fun things because yeah. I just think most of our lives are quite serious, yeah. aren't they? You know, jobs, family, you know, stuff and everything that goes on. And um, and I like that feeling of escapism. Yeah. So I can just make some, just things that make me smile. Yeah. <laughs> and um, and it's quite nice that um, I, 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 say, I, I say this and it all sounds really cheesy, but I'm always amazed when people then buy the pattern yeah. and they want to share the same passion that I've got. Yeah. Because um, because when I'm like in my little cabin making things, I never know whether somebody's going to like it or not. No. And so but, until the first person buys the pattern, yeah. you know, and then I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> it is a really lovely feeling though. I mean, I, I get exactly the same when you guys, when we do a project or something and people actually, and then you actually see a finished sample and you go, oh, somebody actually made what I did. I know, I <laughs> you know, know. This really is a lovely feeling, guys. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and people don't really realize that because they seem to think that you know like we're I don't know like we're famous because we're on tv or something <laughs> or that we're we're some kind of special people with special talents yeah, no. and I and I'm not I'm just a woman that did a job that she hated 
and then decided to take a risk on doing a job that yeah. she loved. And um, I'm probably hanging on by a thread, <laughs> but, um, but I still love what I'm doing. Yeah. And, um, and my name is called Endless Threads because that's what my husband named it. And um, because when I first started, after I'd written the first couple of patterns, I needed to have a name. And then I was like, oh, what can I call myself and whatever. And then he said, oh, you should call yourself Endless Thread. He said, because we're endlessly picking up threads <laughs> everywhere. So, uh, so it was, That's it, really good, actually, because yeah. it is. It's that constant, oh, I've been sewing. It doesn't matter when it goes in the tumble dry, you're still picking bits off you. Exactly. Everywhere. I don't know whether it should have been Endless Thread or Where's My Scissors. <laughs> would have been, it would have been the other um, name for me. It's that. Where are they? Yeah. I know there is somewhere. Yeah. So, so, so enough about um, me. It's, yeah. you know, I haven't really got that much of an exciting life. No. Um, but, um, but yeah, I'll share with you my norm and I know lots of you might have already seen the norms because mm -hmm. I have tried to put them on Facebook and I did try a little demo so it's lovely being with you today yeah. because every time I try doing Facebook live <laughs> it's a hideous car crash mess so that's, that's right like, we're gonna get you sorted with so, your Facebook yeah so now now you're taking control yeah. I just, I feel you so just get to yeah now. you just get to talk and show yeah. your stuff exactly. um, I'm just gonna say hello to everybody it's lovely oh Caroline says she loves your earrings Oh, thank you. Uh, oh, hi, Susie as well. Lovely, lovely. Um, hello, Caroline, Caroline, Jacqueline. Hello, Karen. Karen's in South Africa. She, oh, she? joins in lots. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Hilary. Lovely, lovely. Fab, fab. Lots and lots of people. If you've got any questions for Gail, please do type them away. That's what I'm here for today so that I can... Um, you know, read out any questions or any anything you want to see and everything. Okay, so um, so yeah, go for it. Go okay, tell us then. about your gnomes. So so this is my little note. I don't know whether you can. I don't know what you can see. Uh, sorry. Right. Can, can okay. I, can Let I me just go up a second so I can. Do I, I need don't to, know. Do I need to lift? I think we might need to go to the overhead. If we go to the overhead. Okay. And then you can turn him that way so the camera's right. just here. Let's <laughs> <Just laughs> move those out of the way. So here he is, my my little um, gnome. And he's got a little basket. Can I? Oh, wait. Hang oh, hang on. Hold on. Because we've, we've got a little. There you go. We've got a little delay. Then. Um, there you go. He's right in the. Yeah. So so here is my little gnome. He's called Whistle. And, um, and I started off, some people ask me, how do I start a design? So I started off with his basket, actually. And, um, and I wanted his basket to be big enough for a Cadbury's cream egg, which I'd hidden there under a bit of coloured foil. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's where, where, that's where I started. And then I ended up with him. And what can I say, really, apart from the fact that I really like him? <laughs> and, the, and his beard is great because you can, um, you can cut it, trim it, you know, give him a little haircut. And then you can twizzle the edges and give him a nice little um, moustache and that. So he comes with a little flower. So if you want to decorate him with a flower and a little basket that you can do for um, for Easter. But you could modify him if you wanted. I thought if you took his ears off, he would just then be a little norm. And with Valentine's Day around the corner, maybe you could just make him a little heart and then you could make one for, you know, for somebody that um, you love. You could just get a heart template off the internet. Um, that's not in the pattern. I just did that as a thought. And I was just sharing with Sarah. <laughs> this is I'll the just, best. <laughs> I'll just bring, me, just bring him in. Because I quite liked his hat. I thought, oh, look, I could just do one as a carrot. So I just did his hat in orange this time with a little green tuft. And he's got a little, um, little carrot hat. Now, he, um, I don't kit him. But um, I do a pattern and a kit which um, includes everything that's in there. So you've got the fur for his beard, you've got the fabric for his nose, and you've got the pattern. Everything's completely um, in the kit. Because what I've found over the years, um, Sarah, is when I'm making things, people are disappointed that they can't get, you know, a certain piece of fabric yes. or yeah. a certain piece of fleece or whatever. If you email me or message me on my page, I'm always happy to help and tell you where I buy things from if you want to make more of them. But um, but I do provide a full kit or there's a digital download just for his pattern only. So you could always do that. He's got a little friend and his little friend is Wally. So here's <laughs> Wally. So Wally's got like a shorter hat and um and, and bigger ears and Wally comes with a little um pattern for the carrot and he also comes with a um a little basket as well and both of them come in either in blue and pink or lemon and lime so that's about all I can tell you about my um little gnomes just that I I actually just quite like them oh I think they're delicious I really Thank do you. they are so so cute they look the little folded sort of hat that you've got here how you've done this sort of wrinkling it just gives him so much character 
Thank you. And um, so if you want, um, I did do a Facebook Live. It was a little bit of a disaster, but the main part of the demo is on there. So if you want to look at that on my page, you can see the demo. Um, I'm also going to do another little demo of um, Wally at some point in the next few days. And I will be on the craft store on um, Sunday where you can, um, you can watch me demo both of them. But, but don't buy them off the craft store. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be completely heartless. Oh. Please, please, um, if you want to buy a kit, so we've got get, a get, it, get it from me because you'll yeah. get it really quickly. <laughs> um, so we've got a question here from Leslie. Can they be made by a beginner sewist? We were talking about how easy fleece oh, is to sew, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's really forgiving. And, and what I've been very aware of um, on my journey of writing patterns is I now try to make them... Um, as easy as possible to follow. So some of the techniques I use are not traditional techniques, mm. but um, but they're there to make the job as easy as possible. And in my earlier patterns, they didn't have any colour photographs. It was all just yeah. diagrams. And um, and as I've progressed, I've now got lots of colour photographs yeah. in there. And also, I'm just my my all my details are on the patterns. So if you've got a problem or you get stuck with anything, then just drop me an email. I can always get my camera out and do like a little video and just send you a little video of something. But but I, I will say, um, it sounds like I'm beating my own drum. But I rarely get people ask about how to make something that's really cool because the pattern is so long that everything's <laughs> in there so when you look at my pattern sometimes you might think oh my god there's a lot of pages um but what i just try to do is i assume that whoever's making it doesn't know how to sew yeah so i give you a lot of information so for those of you who can sew you just generally tend to speed read through it and click to the highlights yeah. and that so uh, shall i share with you some other little yeah, um, for designs it. Show us. So this is um, my little Easter uh, basket trio. So I designed these so they could hold an Easter egg. You know, that's sort of that uh, eggs that you get for about a pound. And also it makes a nice little basket that, um, you know, they can, people, you know, children or your friends or whatever can fill with other little goodies after um, after Easter. Oh, be good for doing an Easter egg hunt, wouldn't they, afterwards? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and the good thing with this pattern is, because I like to give people value for money, you get the um, instructions to make him or it uh, the little basket you also i've just dropped all the eggs out of here <laughs> but you get this little basket as well so this little basket oh, with all cute. so um this little basket in the same pattern and also you get this little bag oh, as well so, so it's called a trio because you get all three um in the in the same pattern and the little bunny you can also just make sort of 3d and then you can um you know just make it as like a little hanging really so you've got lots of options in there um i have as well if this is new to me um i've just started to um to digitize a lot of my patterns so that way you can download them and um sorry uh, download them and then you haven't got to worry about waiting for it to come through the pool yeah. so you can get sewing straight away <coughs> well susie's asking uh sorry being dense broken toes fogging your brain oh bless you hope you get better soon do you buy the patterns on the white gecko website no you go to endless threads website what i'll do is when we finish i'll put a link up um, where you can directly go to gail's website but they are um you said you've got digital patterns as well as paper copies but you get them directly from endless threads um although we might be stocking some of our patterns in the shop soon yes. but uh, <laughs> when, we, when we get organized yeah when we get organized but um at the moment you need to go to endless threads okay but i will put a link up to the shop so you can have a little look and i'll put some direct links to some of the things you you've seen today so because i need i need to make one of these gnomes this my little jonah needs one of these for easter doesn't he <laughs> So, mm. so I thought I'd share this with you as well. This is a little Easter um, wreath. So you've got little bunnies on there. You've got some Easter eggs. You've got um, the Easter sign. It's all explained in the pattern how you make all of, all of these things. Again, it's all made out of fleece. So it's really easy and felt at the at the bottom. So everything in there is, is quite straightforward. The pattern not only gives you the instructions to make this wreath, but also gives you the instructions to make this one too. <laughs> so cute. And this one comes with little carrots and this little bunny's bottom is just disappearing down the hall. <laughs> and um, I do have a kit for this one. So if you wanted all the bits and pieces to make it, 
um, you can buy a kit to make the whole thing and the pattern but you'll get the instructions to make this one too so you sort of buy one two and get for one, one. Free. exactly yeah, excellent. so i'd like to think that you get like value for, for, yeah, for money definitely. and that and these are again they're really good fun to make um, some of you who have uh, followed me in the past might have seen that um i did lots of christmas ones with snowmen on and um and uh, father christmas mm -hmm. and reindeers and i did some gnomes at christmas as well yeah. and so he was just taking that idea um, and then taking it through to doing it for Easter. And then I've got ideas that I might do Halloween this year. Whoa. I just thought, oh, can you imagine with a couple of witches? Oh, and... I love a Halloween wreath. Yeah, yeah. I've got a, I've got a um, Jack Skeleton one that I crocheted, which I love, comes out oh, every yeah. year. Love yeah. it. Um, someone's asking, are they hand sewn? Um, everything, nearly 99% of what I do, I do is machined. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't do it by hand. Yeah. It's just that the reason that I am sewing machine is one, I actually like my machine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, my hand sewing's not the best. I, I'm not going to lie to you and say I'm a brilliant at hand sewing. So the, I like the fact that um, when I sew on a machine, it's got a uniform stitch, yeah. you know, and that makes me happy yeah. because, <laughs> I, because I'm quite obsessive. Um, so I like the fact that the stitches are all uniformed, yeah. whereas... Um, hand sewing um, is not so good with me but that doesn't mean everything that I make you could sew by hand and obviously all the little um, extras that I put on all the little pom-poms and um, like with, with this their eyes and everything um, and all their features every all of that is hand sewn on but if you see the blanket stitch and things that are going around the edge of my work um, you'll find nine times out of ten I've machined it although there's nothing to stop you um, hand stitching all nice. of this I, I just say to people do what you really um, yeah. enjoy you know so yeah. a bit like quilting if you enjoy hand quilting then hand quilt if you, if you don't don't yeah, yeah. Um, Carol's saying uh, Carol Mills has said she's made the penguin wreath it's lovely and very easy to make. Ah, oh, thank um, you. Oh, well, there we go. That, that's a, an answer to somebody else's question as yeah. to how easy they are. Um, Claire, yeah, as she's saying, would, could you turn the samples around? What we'll do is, at the, at the end, we're, we're using the overhead at the moment, but we'll hold them up on the front facing in okay. a moment for you, okay? We'll just finish going through them, and then I'll hold them up for you, if that's all right, yeah. okay? If it's easier to hold them up, do you want to just do that? Should we try that? Should we, should we just yeah, try, let's that? try that? Yeah, let's try that. Because they're quite big as well, aren't yeah. they? Let's go so. back to the front facing camera then, and just move this over so you can see. There we go. We should be going on to the front facing. Hi, we should be over here now. Are we over here? <laughs> Let me know. Because you know I never know. <laughs> this is quite good because I can it should catch up in a minute. It, so. <laughs> there we go. Can you guys see? There we are. Yeah, so, so if you saw, go, there's oh, the this, camera there. So there if you just. So this is um, one of my Easter bunnies. Uh, this is made, so some of you might have done this before, you know, can you use up all your scrap fabric? Oh, like a rag so, yeah. yeah. So you just really tie all, all, all your scrap fabric. So all those fabrics that you've got, you know, little bits and pieces left over, you can use them. And the bunny is just then tied on. So you could remove the bunny if you wanted and then ah. use the wreath for other times of the year. And in the pattern as well, because I'd like you to, to have like double use, you also get I'll be your able assistant yeah. <laughs> you also get um, this so you ju you don't only just get um, happy uh, sorry happy Easter you get happy birthday as well oh, so cute. so you can sort of use the rabbit more and yeah. more so you can see on the back I've just got um, ribbons on there and it's just attached by um, by ribbons so um, so it's quite a fun project and you can get the children involved with this with all because it's only just tie in yeah. um, fabric on there so I quite like these. I did a range of these as well, you know, Christmas and and, and different things. So should we just keep on showing you? Yeah. Things? Do you want to see more, guys? Everybody happy for us to carry on showing you more bits? We'll just go back down again. Um, let's see comments. Anybody got any questions? What's the heart quilt behind you? Oh, this is um, this is one that I'm going to be doing soon, hun. Um, it's called the Joyful Heart. Um, it's a mixture of um, patch, uh, applique and red work. Um, we did do a class in the shop. But I'm, I'm thinking about doing it as a, a pattern and a, a quilt along type thing. 
So, um, so yes, we will sort that out for you. Uh, yes, please. They're, they're saying go for it. They want okay. to see more. We'll just, we'll just keep um, going. Um, well, this, just to keep you tempted in, this is part of uh, one of the giveaway um, things that, that we're, do, we're going to do. And um, these are called Easter boxes. So for those of you who like doing a bit of hand sewing, um, this is completely done by hand. It's a Japanese fabric folding technique. And I think I'm going to come back with you at some point, aren't I? Just yes. to do a little demo yeah, on this. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to do a we're going to do a whole one o'clock live on actually how to make one of these. So. Yeah. So this is really good fun, and you can use this technique to do lots of things. And um, and this is folded round triangles, but you can do it folded round squares and that. So the little box can open up, and then in the box, um, you've got a little space for uh, for an Easter egg. You don't have to put an Easter egg in there. You could just put another little gift in there, yeah. you know. But I'll give you the instructions on how to make the little pot that the egg sits in. But I did think you could make a little um, lid for that. And then maybe oh. you could put, like, baby's teeth in there or something. Oh, you know, like a little cute. christening gift. Yeah, absolutely. Gift. A christening gift, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I've also, when we do the, the live... Oh, I've actually got one here. Um, here it is in Christmas fabrics. So once you've got the pattern, you know, it sort of looks Easter because I used Easter fabrics, mm -hmm. but just change the fabric yeah. and then it becomes um, a little box for, uh, for Christmas. To give a gift, if you were like, you know, a little piece of jewellery or something, or, or anything really, it's a little small, mind you, I suppose you could size these up if you wanted to, yeah, you? yeah. if you were a bigger gift. Well, I have got um, a Christmas pattern for this design and they come in all different sizes, oh, so cool. really tiny ones that you can yeah. use for um, an advent, so you can make 25 oh, of them, nice. hang them on the tree and then this size and then a really large one but this size um I taught this at some point and what we did then is we folded up you can fold a fat quarter of fabric triangle oh, nice and put a fat <laughs> quarter of fabric in there and a reel of thread yeah and then it's a really lovely gift to give to a friend yeah. you know yeah for, if you're buying um, like a, you know in your sewing circles or whatever yeah that's yeah. lovely so it's so in our giveaway we're going to give away the pattern to make the Easter version and the um, the violin that I've used for the support, and then um, a pack of buttons and the ribbon, and then you can have a look through the White Geckos shop to find yeah. some lovely Easter themed uh, fabrics. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to have Easter eggs and things on there. You know, you can see I just used a pale lemon. Yeah, you could just use some pretty florals and, and stuff, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. anything really. And, and also, you know, you could just be looking at baby fabrics or things like that and just do them, or, or like the birthday gifts. So yeah. the possibilities are endless. Oh, amazing. While we're talking about giving things away, so while you're still there and you haven't, <laughs> you haven't gone off, um, I did this as a giveaway with um, somebody else that I was doing a, a little chat with. Really? And I showed it on the weekend as well. And the, the, what it is, it's on my website and it's just a free download oh, for lovely. the words Happy Easter and the eggs and that. And then people can um, apply it onto whatever oh, they lovely. want. And what I hope to do, uh, maybe not next weekend, but the weekend after, is just do a little tutorial mm -hmm. to show how I made the cushion and how I did it. And then it's entirely up to you how you um, do it. I, I did it originally because I just thought I'd make it into like a little sign, you yeah. know. And then I thought, oh, um, I thought I was going to put this fabric on the back and quilt it. I just thought, oh, it's a, it's a waste of nice fabric. <laughs> <laughs> so why not make it into a cushion? Yeah. So yeah. I could talk you through. And all of these pieces are just scraps that were left from a quilt. Yeah. I always say to people, if you keep all the scraps from a quilt, then obviously it all goes together, doesn't yeah, it? Because definitely. it all went together in your quilt. And you only really need tiny little pieces of fabric. And you can see I just use tiny little pieces of fabric for the binding. So if you go onto my website um, and just look in where the downloaded patterns are, you'll see it's free and you can download it for, um, for nothing. Brilliant. Yeah, you, I'll, again, I'll put a link on up in a moment for um, with all these like these bits of information and all for you. Um, what else are people saying? So, oh yeah, they love the cushion. They love the little triangle gift box. Um, what else have we got going on? That's really pretty. Oh, you could make it into a little hand sewing tool holder. Oh, you could a little one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You could if you stuff that little round bit for your pin cushion. Exactly. You could do that. That would exactly. be that's a really good idea. Yeah. And you could put like little bits of elastic in and inside it, and then you could you know pop probably put a little tiny pair of scissors or your yeah. thimble or you could hold a packet of pins you know that's what I try to um to say to people I've only got so many hours in the day yeah. myself <laughs> so sometimes I design things and it's just really lovely to see how people then take the idea on yeah. and make lots yours, of other yours things. is the inspiration and then they can use their imaginations I'd, and I'd run like wild with it exactly <laughs> and, and I, I I was saying what a, what a miss because of covid I hate to mention the dreaded word covid <laughs> 
but um, because I don't teach anymore, when I used to be out to teaching, it's lovely when you're with a bunch of like-minded people yeah. because then you can see what they are doing, what fabrics they use, and yeah. then, you know, you lot inspire us as much as we here trying to inspire oh, you. Oh, yeah, definitely. The amount know, of times so. that people will say, oh, you could do this with it, and you think, oh, that's a really good idea. Um, and then, then you run with that idea and you can you come up with something exactly. completely different. Yeah. I, I used to turn up to teach people to make a quilt and that, and then I used to do fabric envy because I found that my students <laughs> had nicer fabric <laughs> than, than I had. I still do that now. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's a nice idea. <laughs> Damn, I shouldn't have thought of that. I'll go around but, the shows and be like, oh, why didn't I order that for? Fabric. that's really nice yeah, exactly. so, so if you think that we, we all do it we spend most of our time looking at somebody else's work rather yeah. than looking at our, at our own so this is a cat that I designed um, back last year and I, did I start with a cat I can't remember yeah I think I started with a cat and um, and it was designed with a little pocket on the back so you could put a little gift in there or you could put your remote control in there or a child could put a book in there and, that. and I did these all in different colours. Yeah. I never bothered doing a kit because it basically just takes half a metre of fleece and everybody oh, right. can buy that. <laughs> yeah. But if you need the eyes, I have got the eyes on my on my website because that's generally what people struggle with is, is finding the eyes. And then I made the cat. So was, once you start making something, you think, yeah. oh, what can I make next? Yeah. I did make a dog. I haven't got the dog with me because there's only so much stuff I could fit in yeah. the car. <laughs> um, but here's one of the sheep. So this is I love you, love um, and the original <laughs> one had a pocket on the back that said I love you, but because this is just a demo um, sheep, um, this one hasn't got the pocket on the back. And in the pattern you also get Rambo, who's oh, got right. the ram With the, horns. the horns, yeah. Yeah, sadly yeah. Um, Rambo is, like I said, on holidays in Sussex <laughs> at the moment, um, so we haven't got Rambo with us. But these are lovely, they're lovely and squidgy and soft. Again. If you're new to sewing, it really they are really are quite simple to make. I wouldn't lie to you. I'll show you something, and, and I'll be honest with you, this is a little bit more challenging. So um, his head might fall off because <laughs> it, it's only it's only it's stuck, only pinned on. It's only, only stuck on with oh, pins. So you love the sheep. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to be putting all the links up for the patterns, okay? Yeah. So you'll be able to have a little go at this. I'm just going and um, I'll uh, I know that Gail does some kits, but not. Well, not most of it's not. I know to... this is really bad. Can I pass that? Yeah, over of course. To you so there we I go. Can, I, so I can get another box. Um, I know Gail does some kits, but not a, not everything is kitted. So I'll get some ideas as well where you can buy the fleece and all from her, and I'll put some links up so you can you can buy her a pattern and then you can make a sheep. Look at him. Yeah, he's he's super cute. Oh, and, and I will I will share with you you know anything. And, and and what I'd like to, I like to share this because I also like to share my disasters. Okay. So I made this some years years ago. Um, my my friend uh, James, he had a little boy, and he wanted something. He said, "Could I make something for his little boy?" And I made this little robot because I thought it was cute, and it sort of reminded me of like the seventies style robot and that oh, disco bot. Yeah, yeah. So he's so cute. And originally I made him in fabric. I've got the fabric version, and it really didn't sell. No. At all. Nobody Aww. liked it. And, and I, I thought I was so clever. I made like Meccano lettering and everything. And I loved him. So I remade him in glitter felt because yeah. I love glitter felt. And he's so much easier in glitter felt <laughs> because you can just zigzag round in invisible thread. And, and it turned out really, really quickly. Yeah. And you know what? I still can't sell him. So, so, so if you're all watching thinking, oh my God, she makes all this lovely stuff and everybody likes it. They don't always. <laughs> they don't always. So I brought him along just to say that, you know, so when I'm when I'm in my cabin and I'm making things, yeah. I make things sometimes oh, I and think sometimes he's fantastic. Yeah, I, love him. I really loved him. But Disco bot. He's yeah, amazing. But, but and, and I thought people could do whatever they wanted with yeah. him, but no. And you got a full alphabet so you could use the McCarn or version. Yeah. No. It's yeah, funny, isn't it? Sure. Well, we we find that as well. You know, particularly going on the craft store, I'm sharing secrets now. But you know, we'll come up with an idea and we think, oh yeah, that yeah, love that, love it, love it. We kit it out. Oh, I love those fabrics. It doesn't sell at all. No. And you think, what the hell? Where, where, why did I go wrong with that one? I know. And then something you think, oh, I'm not sure about this. I'm really not sure. You know, I have panic attacks about well, not literal panic attacts, but I have like proper oh, about stuff. Think going on, and then I think, and it absolutely flies out, and you're like. 
how how is that working but that didn't it's, yeah. it's very strange sometimes what what we exactly. think it, it is going to go because you've got you've got a limited time when you're on there yeah. and they want to feature like the main things don't yeah. they? so you tend to feature the things you think people are really going to like and then you put a few things on the end that you might like but you think are probably won't yeah. sell <laughs> and then i find that i'm then i'm all prepped to demo something yeah. and it's something right down the end of the counter yeah they're going I'm, oh yeah like, that's gone and they're whipping it off and yeah. you're like oh how yeah. did that happen <laughs> and it, 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 I, I say it, it doesn't matter how long i do this for i just don't understand the public at all <laughs> i don't understand what, what people buy so this is oh chris is saying i bet he'd sell if he was a stormtrooper you can't, we can't you can't sell any licensed uh, things though that's the problem copyright issues yeah so you couldn't make him into like star warsy and then sell the pattern because no. it's mi disney are very hot on copyright believe you me oh <laughs> good god yeah yeah they'd have us hand drawn and quartered wouldn't they in seconds <laughs> yeah and um, so this is who is he he's terry so this is little terry and now because oh because God. little terry is little that means he's more challenging to sew. Right. So if I was a beginner, I might give little Terry a wide berth um, initially until I'd made... Start with a gnome or a sheep other. or something. Yeah. And then... So the sheep, I could knock out half a dozen sheep in a day easily. And, and if I was going to make it to sell and whatever, yeah. they'd be great. But little Terry, he's not... I mean, I've seen loads of him made, so, mm. so he's achievable. But as they get smaller and fiddly, then um, then if you're new to sewing, they take a little bit longer. Well, I suppose, yeah, like when you're in, in setting the feet and all, it's quite a tight curve, curve and stuff, isn't exactly. it? exactly. Yeah. And he's got a little girlfriend, <laughs> Tina. So this is Tina and Terry. It's all T's, because I started off with... And I'm sure a lot of you have seen this. I started off with Trevor... <laughs> so this is this is Trevor. So it's fab. yeah. And um and when I come to demo Trevor, I actually did him in black instead. Oh, right. uh, not not the, the bunny, but um his costume in black. Mm -hmm. And then with his hat and that I put playing cards in there and then he looked like um a magician. Oh yeah, like rabbit out the hat yeah, job, yeah. yeah. So sort of um sort of made him sort of like magicianish. And um and then I thought as I was making this jacket in black and that, he'd make a really good groom. Oh, you yeah. know, so you could make them for somebody's wedding, um, maybe. So here's his girlfriend or wife, <laughs> depending. We'd hope wife, wouldn't we? Because if those others are their children, yeah. <laughs> we'd like to think that they bothered to get married. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they're not modern, these bunnies. So this is... Um, Tracy then so a little Tracy and these although they're bigger they're actually easier to make than the smaller ones so people tend to think sometimes oh do you know what I'll start off small yeah but um it's, it's a bit like clue, isn't yeah it? a bit like quilting really mm. if you've got nice 12 inch blocks they, they yeah. go together quite nicely <laughs> yeah, definitely. once you start doing like dear Jane you're down to four inch well, blocks like and this that. and you're using half inch half square triangles and yeah, yeah, and yeah you're crying <laughs> slightly so yeah so that's so that's Tina and uh, sorry Trevor and Tracy have I got anything else to show you oh I'll share with you shall I share? can I just ask you a quick yeah, question sorry. um because I know we've got quite a lot of people that make for charity and make to sell and stuff are, oh God, are you yeah. happy with people to make sheep yeah. and then sell it on ready-made yeah, products exactly yeah. and, and i think make as many as you can do you yeah. know what i mean because then you get your money back for the pattern and you get your money back from the fabric and then you can make cool. more or or some of the things like the sheep and the cats and that they're just perfect for making for charity because they're quick and easy yeah. to make um as well yeah so I, I positively encourage people i know sometimes when you get patterns there's um like a limit to how many you can yeah. make and and it's up to each individual designer what yes. what yeah. where they set their boundaries but for me um as long as you buy the pattern and you don't reproduce the pattern mm -hmm. you can make as many of the items as you want and i'm happy for you to adapt them as well you know some people are a bit precious they designed it a certain way they yeah. want to keep it a certain way i like to see the modifications yeah. i do i like I like people to <coughs> adapt things and that so I'll share with you um, just just one or two other things, and then that's me. I'm not. I'm just talking. <laughs> um, just while you're digging that, let's just have a quick look at the comments. Um, so yeah, Jane's loving the rabbits. Uh, Debbie's saying she, he loves his little satchel on your rabbit. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you um, you yeah. could fill it with other things though. Oh, uh, Sir Jane's there. Hi, Sir Jane. Hope you're enjoying Cornwall. Um, she loves Trevor. <laughs> um, 
who else is on here? Oh, Linda, bless you. So Linda's watching in silent mode. How oh. rude of the jury duty to interrupt. She'll have to catch up tonight. So oh. Linda, who works in the shop with us, yeah. um, she's on jury du duty this week, bless her. Oh, well. She's watching on silent mode. Well done, Linda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. <laughs> oh, I'm just supposed to be concentrating. <laughs> Maybe they're on a break, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. this, this is one of my favourite things that um, really sold well and was really popular and this is my hedge pig. <laughs> so um, when I was designing him I, I wanted to find some way to make um, the, the spines and that. This one's made out of um, brushed cotton oh, nice. yeah. and that as, as opposed to um, just normal fabric. And I, want, I was going to use prairie points originally mm. because that was something that I've used to do in with actually you've got like this yeah yeah prairie points, prairie yeah. points um, here and there and then that didn't really work for me it was too flat so then I just sat there fiddling and twiddling with bits of fabric and then I came up with a technique of how I made the spines on him and he's got a little tiny friend mm. and this one's just made again out of scraps of fabric that was left over from a quilt and an old pair of jeans so these are really good to um make and sell as well yeah. and then after I'd made these this is where you know like when you design it like it evolves and yeah so the, the way I folded the fabric here I had to fold it so that I didn't have any raw edges because I didn't want any fraying and that and then I had this like eureka moment mm. of well if I'd done it in felt yeah then it wouldn't afraid at all and then I wouldn't have to use as much fabric yeah and that's so then, you could just fold it the once then couldn't you rather than having to double it over exactly and so that's how it evolves <coughs> into things like this then so this is only a small version this is actually taken from a draft excluder where there was three of them in a row um and some people will have seen lots of stuff that i've made with this technique wreaths christmas trees or you name it but that's how sometimes you know people ask me when when i design how do i get to where i go yeah. You don't necessarily wake up one morning with a eureka yeah. moment of this is <laughs> no. how it works. You take, you steal elements of things from other things that you you've yeah, made. Yeah, absolutely. Like we've saying, with you know, you you did prairie points with quilting. So how can I make that into hedgehog spines, and then that grows into another idea? Yeah, exactly. So I always I always encourage people that nothing's ever wasted. So if you see a class or a tutorial of somebody teaching mm. something, then just learn to do it. Even if you don't like it, just learn to do it, and see how it's done. Because then one day when you're sewing something and you want to you wanna turn something a certain way yeah. or you want to make it look a certain way, you'll suddenly go, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's why that's useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so a lot of things that I learned in college, and I did a couple of years of City and Gills, needless to say, didn't go into amazing quilts, <laughs> but went into some like 3D things. Yeah. So, that's, so that's how some of these are um, born. And um, oh, I think I think you're going to be a bit busy, Han. So people are loving the hedgehogs. Uh, Holly's like, I can't decide on my favourite. They're all fab. Um, oh, thank you. Dawn, she, she said, oh, I've got hedge pig and Rambo and you sheep. Um, and I love you sheep. I need to see pictures then. Yeah, Dawn, can we pictures. have pictures, please? Dawn's like a machine or so, and she's amazing. Oh, she? she does a lot of our samples for us. She's a brilliant. Uh, people are loving the hedgehog. Oh, Leslie, oh my God, hedgehogs are my favourite. <laughs> Uh, Heather, oh, your watch back later, lovely. Uh, loving all the items in the quilt on the wall. Brilliant. Lovely, lovely. Hi, guys. Do you have a YouTube channel where you post tutorials? Um, I'd like to say I have, but I haven't because <laughs> I don't know how to do it. So there'll be something else that I need you to... Borrow, borrow I, one of my boys. Yeah, I'm going to lend them out to Gail. <laughs> yeah, I, I, need, um, I, need, I need a little push in the right direction. Yeah. So um, I'm quite new to the whole social media thing. I've, um, I've spent... Although I'd, I've had the business for some years, mm. I've, I, I, I'm not going to lie to you, I, I am not the face of Endless Thread. If I could avoid being on TV or anything, <laughs> I would. So I've been really slow coming to the forefront mm. and actually sharing things because I didn't honestly believe that people would want to see me sit in doing things. So, um, so I'm a little bit slow to the party, so I am trying. So my next step will be, once I've mastered Facebook Live, um, <laughs> then to, because I think you can then put it onto YouTube. Yeah, yeah, I just, you? yeah, I just download them all and then upload them onto YouTube. Yeah, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, just like that, you do that. I didn't at first, oh yeah, but I've had to do like <laughs> 300 of them now. Yeah. Well, at first, I had to, Alex, who's my number four boy, he um, he set up my YouTube channel for me and was like, right, you literally, you click this button and then this button and then you need to type and like, it's actually quite easy once you've done it, but yeah, I'd have had not a clue to start with. No. He was, the, I was very lucky, I've got, very nerdy boys. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I haven't got a clue, and and I, th I think it's definitely the way forward. And and what I'd like to do going forward is, 
every time I write a pattern is then to do a tutorial on yeah. there where I just show some of the like the little fiddly bits or or you know sometimes there's only so much you can write in a pattern yeah but sometimes just the way you hold something or the way you feed something through the machine or whatever so when I understand how like all these cameras work and how I can get that kind of technology going then yes I will so sort of watch the space slowly <laughs> we'll keep you updated <laughs> yeah yeah as soon as I, I can master it so my real passion, hence with the robot that nobody liked, um, <laughs> was to applique and um, and when I first started writing patterns and a lot of my quilts I exhibited, they were all applique mm. because that's what I really love to do. Love to sort of have like drawings and whatever in yeah. quilts. And um, so with that in mind, I was looking for an easier way for people to do it because not everybody wants to do a satin stitch yeah. and spend that, that length of time. So I brought out these range, range of cushions. They, have, they actually haven't got any cushions in them at the moment. They've just got a piece of card in there. That's why they look a bit flat. But I started these last year and these were my woodland uh, view. And this was my first toadstool house. And the good thing with this is it's all done in felt. So there's no frayed edges. 90% um, of it, I would say 99 point, not all of it, I'm not just looking, it's all straight stitch. No, I lie, a little piece of, a little bit of um, satin stitch around there. But yeah, it's all, most of it is straight stitched. So it's really, really forgiving and you can make like a little scene, you know, with it. So this was my Woodland View one. Do you mind if we put this on the overhead? Because you guys need to see the detail in this. Oh, right. oh, absolutely. Yeah. Should I move some of this? Yeah, let's just the... move these a second. I'm going to put this onto the overhead just so you guys can see because you can the see all detail... the threads I've left. Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> the detail in this is absolutely stunning. Look at these tiny, tiny little leaves here. And you've done, is that like little French knots and all yeah, into it? Yeah, so, so back to the... Beautiful, I'd, beautiful little toadstool down here. I, I did That's bother stunning. to do a little bit of... Um, and, and these, these flowers here, are actually... Um, I, I sell like a little kit to go with it. These are actually pre-bought ones, these are. But in the pattern, I actually give you the, um, the templates to make them. And if you ever saw me demo this I did on um, on the craft store I do cut out all of these flowers as well so but I, I know some people don't want to do that so yeah. I, so I made an option where you could just have these little butterflies yeah. and that but in the in the pattern you actually get everything um, all all of the things on there and this looks challenging but it really isn't you know I'm I'm not some super clever person that does something that's oh, amazing honestly that, don't put yourself down because the design of that is beautiful the way you've got like depth and dimension just by layering it all up yeah. is, is fantastic thanks but I, I also explain in my, in my pattern how you ma I make it quite easy. Mm. So I don't put I don't stick it all down in one go, and then and then just applique it all down. I applique it in layers, and then that way it hides all the ends of my thread. Yeah. So I haven't got to, cause <laughs> Sneaky. I, I, I don't know about you, right, but I I just tire of pulling threads oh, straight to the gosh, back yeah. and snipping them off. So I explain in the pattern as well, and when I'm demoing how to make this as easy as possible, and again you could just hand stitch the whole lot and because it's felt um, it would lend itself. I have seen this done in fabric, a few of my ladies um, did it in fabric. Let me, let me come back up here again now. There we go, now you can see it, there we go. Can you see that? Like that? Hopefully if I come close to the camera you can see all. There we go, right, next, okay. one. <laughs> so next one. So this was Woodland View 2 then. So this, I wanted to do um, like a little tree trunk and then I wanted to have the leaves so they sort of, it's a bit squashed because it's been in, in a box for a while, but the leaves have got some kind of movement in them. And it's my little woodland um, tree. And again, I, I'm not sure how much of this you can see. It's got a little wall in there, some little toadstools, a little gnome. That is a button. He's a little button. He's not, um, He's. I haven't stitched him. Uh, and that, but it's all, it's all pretty, you know straightforward to do and then this is a little bit of free motion so I'm sure a lot of you do free motion quilting well this is just um, the same kind of idea but I'm not quilting I'm just drawing with the, the, the foot on my machine and this you could even do this with a walk-in foot on if you wanted so um, again it's not not as challenging as it is as it might look it looks more challenging because it's finished yes yeah you know when it when it's not um uh, not that's finished so really gorgeous so, so that's that one should you need to show that one again let's just go let's go there just in case so you can see that one there okay can you see 
Look, you can see that little tiny gnome down there. He's very cute. I love the dimension you've got on them. They're really fantastic. Thank you. And so I've got this idea, right, that I'm having a whole range of them. So I've got Woodland <laughs> View 1, 2, and this is number 3. I don't know why I really call this Woodland, because it's a boot. I, mm -hmm. I don't think you find boots in the Woodland, but anyway. Um, so I've, I've got... It's on the fly tip in, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> I've got ideas to make um, a lot more, to keep continue with, with the range. They've been, um, yeah, quite popular. Now, for me, things like this matter. So when I designed this, I wanted it to look like it had proper shoelaces and I wanted it to look like the, the edges of the boot like folded over. If things like that don't bother you, you can just applique it all down flat, you know. So um, and, and the same with the, the laces. I've threaded the felt into the into the holes wow. so that it looks like a proper boot because for me, Sarah, right? People say to me, oh, "Why do I bother?" It's because that's what makes my piece of work make me happy. Yeah. Makes me happy, you yeah. know. Makes me happy because it's going that extra mile, isn't it? It's yeah. making it just a little bit more realistic, which gives it such a professional look. I mean, I love the dimension and all you've got yeah. on them. They're fantastic. And, uh, thank you, and I, and I think that's what makes it not look like something you buy from a shop. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, I would say just go and buy it from a shop. Yeah. You know, just go, <laughs> just go into IKEA or wherever, and you see something nice cushion with something on the front, just buy that. But I, I like my work to look like I've actually, yeah. you know, made it and then oh my god the possibilities are endless of the things you could add to that um i've i have to stop so right. sometimes people say oh you know that one. why why don't i do um why don't i do add some more things or put extra things on there there has to be a point where yeah. um it's the um where i stop yeah because me look it's the little milk bottles outside the door can you see those guys how cute is that? <laughs> that is so cute. Oh, people are loving this. Oh, some people are saying their free motion leaves a lot to be desired, but that's just practice, guys. Absolutely practice. Yeah, and and Need so and so does mine. And first. and so one of the things that I I, I do right is uh, one of the things when I'm when I'm uh, teaching or or demoing and that. If I this is this is mine. I I made this. Yeah. I will never ever put it straight under the machine. So what I do is when I cut out the, the roof, say, mm -hmm. or the or the grey chimney or whatever, the piece that's left over from when I cut out, I will put that on a piece of background of whatever background I'm yeah. working on. Now, don't put it on some other background because it needs to be the exact fabric that yeah. you're, you're working on. And then I'll pop that under the machine and I'll have a little go at it because I'm checking that the tension's right on my machine. I've got the right colour thread in there. You know, sometimes you do this quickly. You haven't you haven't yeah. uh, threaded your machine properly, you know. And then I have a little practice, and then I go on to my piece. It's such a good time. And I do it all the time because the disappointment of when you get on there and you've messed it up, and also other things you can do. You know, those uh, pens that disappear and whatever. You can draw your design so you can yeah. follow it. I find that a little bit disappointing because I I struggle to actually follow the line that I've yeah. drawn. <laughs> so then I've got the drawn line and I've got my line. But it maybe that that works for yeah. some people. But I I'm not um I'm not brilliant at drawing. It's not really my my forte, and and I'm not really that good at um at free motion either. Mm. So what I do is I get the idea in my head, and then I have a little practice on something. Yeah, and then. I've, I understand which way I need to move and, yeah. and how it works and then I go to the machine. Now people who are brilliant at it and do it every day just go straight there and do it yeah. and I think that's what makes us disappointed because we see them doing yeah, it. Yeah, you, you watch YouTube videos and they, they go on and they're just like, oh yeah, this is how you do feathers and blah 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 and you think, well, you know, it's not that people then get disappointed when it doesn't happen immediately but that's taken them 10 years of doing it every day to get to that point. And, and, you and have to be kind exactly, to yourself. Exactly, yeah. and, and that's what they do so if you look at my work, okay, I'm showing you some applique here, I'm showing you some 3D stuff, I'm showing you some hand sewing, some... I, I can hold my own in, in most things, but I, I'm, I'm better than some, but not as good as others, yeah. you know. We, we're not all brilliant at everything, and we don't need to be. No. What we need to be is we need to be kind to ourselves and be happy with what we do. Oh, yeah, enjoy you the know. process as much as everything, anything yeah. else. Yeah. I'll, I'll share with you, when I went to college, so, so when I first went to college and did City and Gills and that, I'd never made a quilt in my life, okay? I did this thing where I cut out some squares, wanted to put triangles next to them, so I cut out some squares and cut them in half to triangles, yeah. sewed them together, and then didn't understand why they didn't fit next to the squares. <laughs> yeah. That's what my quilting was like. 
and then I sat there and they went around the table and people said oh yeah I've been to um you know college and uni and I've done like you know design and whatever I've been to royal school of needlepoint and and I sat there thinking, oh my God, <laughs> I don't know anything. And uh, I'm completely overwhelmed by all these other people that were there. And then the lady who was there, the, the lecturer, Lee, who I'm still really friendly with, she said to me, you need to measure your own journey, not yeah. everybody else's. She said, you'll find that you'll start here. And she said, and you might go a long way in these two years. And other people will start a bit further on and maybe they won't go anywhere. Yeah. So she said, don't measure yourself against other people. That's such good measure advice. Measure your own yeah. journey. And so, so I've got my first quilt I ever made, and I've got the first things I ever designed. And don't think I don't look at some of the patterns that are on my website <laughs> now and go, Ooh, what was I thinking? <laughs> yeah, I could have done a better job at that. So, but when I look at where I've got, you know, I, I, I'm constantly trying to improve, mm. but I am not spending my whole life whipping myself because I'm not as good as somebody else. Yeah. Because there's plenty of people out there that can do that for me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to do it to myself. So don't be despondent. I've got loads of disasters. I've got gonks that go in the bin. You know, the eyes are wrong. I, I, sew, I sew them together wrong. It doesn't just, it doesn't just magically turn yeah. out perfect every time. It's a, it's a process. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, a, it's a creation. I, we've said before on here, you know, you're creating a piece of art. Just because it's not with a paint and a paintbrush, it is a little piece of art. And it's a little piece of you. You've put your time and your effort into that. You know, and, it's, and whether it's you're just making it for yourself or you're making it for a gift, it's, that's, your, that's your process. And yeah. you enjoy it. Have yeah. fun with it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you have to remember it's easier for me. Right? Always remember it's easier for me. Because when I made this then, so if we just look at this, okay, I made this and I made it this way. Mm -hmm. Now I'm asking you to make it exactly the same yeah. as me. Whereas I had a bit of poetic license yeah. over where <laughs> the stuff went. So, so it's harder for you because you're looking at what I've made and you're trying to recreate. Yeah. Whereas I just had free, free run to do yeah. whatever I wanted at, at, at the beginning. So make it, um, and I think the fact that you've put a bit of yourself into it. Yes. And, and I, I always say, you know, that what you make should be better than what I've made because I've shown you what I can do. Hopefully we've ironed out the problems. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and you, and you add, add the other bits. So I'll, I'll share, shall I share one last thing? Yeah, have share one enough? last thing, yeah. Have we had enough of me now? Oh, everyone's problems? saying it's been such a lovely hour sharing your craft, so different and yet so lovely. Um, Janice is saying she's loved this hour. Um, Leslie, I will say it may not be perfect, but it's made with love, and I hope it brings you pleasure. That's a nice way of looking at a it. Absolutely, sentiment. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what this should be about. And it's you know, it's why we started the one o'clock, is to share all this stuff with you guys, and you share it back with us on the gigglers and stuff. And it's yeah, it's like oh my god, that is yeah. so cute. So, so I'm sharing this with you, <laughs> so cute. And because because sometimes I make something that really makes my heart sing. And this is the kind of thing that, that it does. So this is my little fairy crescent. It's a bit battered now. It's had a hard life. It's a <laughs> few years old. But every time I look at it, I still it still brings Makes me joy. And, and this was when I first started going from teaching, from designing for quilters with mm. quilters in mind. So I first tried to, to dip my toe into 3D things, but I was still thinking about sewing people. So that's why I made, this is my little pin cushion. So the pattern comes with the pin cushion and then it comes with the larger toad stool. There we go. So the larger oh, so toad stool cute. has a lid that comes off. Wow. And then inside, there's a little needle case so you can keep your needles. So I was always, I always had, you know, keep your eye on the prize sort of thing. You need to, to design for a certain market. And that was because at the time I was designing with sewing people in mind. I mean, you could make it into a trinket box. And I think it comes with a, might be, anyway, oh yeah, a scissor keeper as well, sorry. So it comes with a little... Um, scissor, scissor keeper as well for you to keep <laughs> um, on, on your scissors. But yeah, this was the kind of thing that I, I was just like, oh, I really enjoyed doing 3D, and this is what then dragged me into making. So, so when you look at this, yeah, and then we looked at the applique, yeah, cushion. You can understand so where, where, I was... where you go, but yeah, you're going back towards your toadstool, your woodland, yeah. and all this beautiful decoration. So, so all of all of it is just like you know. That's why I encourage people. There's designers in us all. You know, when you get out of bed in the morning and you put your clothes on, right, you're designing your outfit. Yeah, 
when you when I look at your homes, your homes are probably beautiful and you've got lovely curtains and carpets and you designed all that. Yeah. It's not um it's not it's not something it's not a it's not a mystery. We all do it. <laughs> it's just some of us are a little bit braver to put it into a pattern than yeah. others. That's Absolutely. all. Right, I'm going to wrap it up, but we are going to do a giveaway. I just want to say thank you so much oh, for coming. You. It's been amazing, hasn't it, ladies? I just... Thank you. Yeah, I'm loving your work. Uh, these gnomes, I'm just... I need to make one for my Jonah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this is all just... It's beautiful. Thank you so thank much you for coming. Much. And I'm going to hopefully persuade you back, and we're going to do... A, you're going to do an actual little demo, aren't Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do one of those little Japanese fold-in ones. Yeah. So, giveaway. Right, if Lovely. I put these down here. Yeah, yeah. So, rules of giveaway, my darlings, is... I'm going to pop a post up on our Facebook page, which will have um, Endless Threads Facebook page on it. You need to comment on my post and tag somebody into it, okay? And then you need to go over to Gail's Endless Threads, and she's we're going to, it'll be a little post on there as well, and you're going to comment on there as well. So you need to like and follow, basically. Like, follow, and comment, all right? But I'll put it all into a post. And Gail is very, very kindly... Um, <coughs> giving us a little kit. Do you want to explain what the little kit yeah. is, lovely? So, so the little kit is for the Easter box. So one of you will already have the stuff ready for when we do the live demo. So you're going to get the full pattern and the instructions to make both size boxes. In there you'll have the violin to, um, to make I can't remember, like three or four boxes, I think. Oh, wow. um, and the ribbon, uh, the narrow ribbon and the button. So that's all you'll need is a little bit of fabric and a little bit of wadding. It's a great way of using up what you've got left over from your quilts Brilliant. and a great excuse to buy more fabric. <laughs> it was a shoe dies with the most fabric wins. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, you can never, it's like crack cocaine, I tell you. I can't, can't keep fabric and buttons. It, it, oh, I'd, Sarah's I'd a button be, fiend. Yeah, I'd be rich if I did. <laughs> if I didn't uh, buy fabric and buttons, so yeah, so it's all it's all in there for you. But the the choice is still there for you to um you to have the uh, fabric of your choice. Wow. And don't forget the free download on my website yeah. for the Easter cushion. Lovely. And there's some other free downloads on there as well while you're there cool. if you want to visit. So I'm going to put a post up on our website. You need to like the post and tag somebody in in the comment. So I've got your name basically. But you need to go over onto Endless Threads Facebook page and like and comment on there as well. All right. Yeah. And then what we'll do is on Tuesday next week, we'll give you guys a week to have a little look around and everything. Tuesday next week, I will draw a winner on the live for this and we'll let you yeah. we'll get this sent out to somebody. And I, I have got, can I just plug mm -hmm. my... Um, my uh, What's the word I'm looking for? My newsletter. Oh, cool. So um, you can subscribe to the newsletter. Don't panic, okay? Because as you can tell, I'm not very good with social media. <laughs> the best you can hope for is one newsletter a month. So I'm not going to bombard well, it's you. more than we do. I think ours are about, well, Sean does one about every 10 yeah. weeks, I think. Oh, yeah, I, I manage once a month. And, it, and in that newsletter this time, I actually mentioned that I was coming here today. Oh, lovely. So it would be good if you subscribe to the newsletter. Um, if I ever get on the craft store again after Sunday, I'll mention <laughs> that I'm on there. If I'm going to do a Facebook it's, Live... It's a big, big you know. thing going on at the minute. So, so whatever I end up... Uh, demonstrating um, it will be in the newsletter but don't panic You, it's not going to be one of them where you wake up every morning and go oh my god she's emailing me again <laughs> once a month so, nice little read <laughs> yeah once, once a month uh, it's short and sweet it's short yeah. and sweet is what it cool. is cool thank you so much for joining us Gail thank and you. thank you ladies and I'll be back tomorrow remember it's at 7pm tomorrow because we're starting the, uh, the quilt along so I'll be live at 7pm there's nothing at 1 o'clock um, and I'm going to now go in Make, have, make a cup of coffee. We're well, going to go back to the shop, make a cup of coffee and work out a date when Gail can do a little demo for you all, okay? So um, look out for the post for the giveaway and we'll see you all soon. Bye! Thanks, bye! Bye!